Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are the people of the world. 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 Hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good. Hallelujah. So we hope to Him be all the glory. God is good, God is good, hallelujah, glory, 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 hallelujah, Father, we bless your name. Jehovah God, we worship you. Everlasting King of glory, we adore you. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. Immortal, invisible, mighty, everlasting God. We worship you. 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 Rahi Basia, in Kalaba Baba Baba, Elu Gugu Gugu Gugu, Uri Basi Kalabasia, Uri Lugu Sansari Basia, Ramba Barahi Basansari Lugu Gusia, Ramba Sansari Baba Baba Baba, Rahi Basansari Lugu Gusia, Elu Gugu, in Kalaba Balam Gugu. Uri basan sari baba lam gubu. Uri basan sari baba 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 lam gubu. Helu gubu hela. In kala baba lam gubu hela. Uri baba 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 lam gubu hela. Rambara i basan sari baba lam gubu hela. In kala baba baba uri basan sari baba lam gubu hela. Helu gubu in kala baba uri basan sari baba lam gubu hela. Father, we worship you. Oh, we praise you, God. We adore you, mighty King. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the one that seated in the heavens and made the earth your footstool. Father, there is none like you, God. We worship you. We adore you. Blessed be thy name, O God. In the name of Jesus. Rahiba Santari Lugusia, in Kalaba Santari Babalam Gubusia, Ye Lugubu, in Kalababalam Gubu, Uriba Santari Babalam Gubu, Ramba Baba Rahiba Santari Babalam Gubu, Ye Lugubuela, in Kalababalam Gubuela, Ramba Rahiba Santari Babalam Gubuela, Uriba Santari Lugusia, in Kalababa Baba, Ye Lugubu. In Kalababalam Gubu, Uri Basan Tari Babalam Gubu, Rambara Ibasan Tari Babalam Gubu, Mighty King, we worship you. Everlasting Father, we adore you. Blessed be your name, O God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we praise you, Father. Jehovah God, we adore you, Lord. We lift you higher. You are mighty, you are great, you are beautiful, you are awesome. Mighty King, you are marvelous. Great is thy name, O God. Great is thy name, O God. Great is thy name, O God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rainbow, go, 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 Ramba Rahiba Santari Lugubu, Elugubu Hela, Enkala Baba Baba Baba, Uri Basia, Uri Lugubu Sia, 
Randa Rahim Basan Sari Basia, Randa Rahim Basan Sari Little Basia, mighty everlasting King of glory. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. Oh, Father, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rebu Sikala Basia. Ramba Baba Bara Hilo Bobo. In Kalabasan Sari Baba Nam Bobo. Uri Lobo Huri Basia. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We praise you, Father. We adore you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for this hour. Thank you, God, Father Lord. Jehovah, King of glory, we see my thanks in the name of Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are mighty, Lord. You are mighty. You are great, Lord. You are greater. Hori Basia, in Calabasia, Ramba Santa Ribasia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uri Baba Baba Baba, Ramba Santa Ribasia. You are marvelous. You are great, O God. Jehovah God, we praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Everlasting King, we bless your name. Oh, glory, 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 glory. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. Rainbow Sia, Rin Kalaba Santari Basia. Rainbow Sia, Rin Kalaba Rahima Santari Basia. Hello, Bobo, Father, we worship you. Hello, Bobo, Father, we adore you. Hello, Bobo, Father, we need to hire. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. Glory, Basin, Calabasia. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, Bobo, who we basin, Calabasia. Ramba, Baba, 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 who we basin, Calabasia. In Calabasi, Ramba, Rahiba, Santa, Rebasia. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we bless your name. Oh, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. Oh, Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 Jehovah, we praise your name, O oh God. We thank you. Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to gather again at your presence. You said we are two or more are gathered and you are in their midst, oh God. You said, oh God, that we are two or more are gathered. You are right here in our midst, Father Lord. And you said nobody comes before your presence and lives empty handed. Father Lord, we have gathered again today, a brand new day. It is a day that your Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Father Lord, receive a thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity, oh Lord, to learn at your feet, oh God. You said we should seek wisdom, seek understanding, and seek knowledge, oh God. Father, Lord, we gather together to seek wisdom, knowledge, and understanding at your feet, Father, tonight. Jehovah God, receive our thanks in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you prepare every heart, that all hearts, oh Lord, shall be, shall be blessed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Nobody will come here and live empty-handed. Nobody will come on this platform tonight and live the same way that they have come. In the name of Jesus. Mighty King, I pray, Father Lord, that you shall meet everyone at their point of need tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, oh Lord, I pray that every joke shall be broken from off their shoulder. In the name of Jesus. Every chain shall be broken tonight in Jesus' name. 
every form of stress, every form of troubles. Jehovah God, we are dressed tonight in the name of Jesus. You will give an understanding and a clear vision and a, a clear clarification about issues of our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I pray Jehovah that heaven shall is already opened. I declare heaven open already in the name of Jesus. Oh, I discard the angels of the living God to go around and begin to, dis to uh, dispatch the angels of God uh, to go around and begin to minister to every soul on this platform. In the name of Jesus, uh, my Lord and uh, my God, everyone shall live here with their packages and blessings. Uh, in the name of Jesus, no one, no one shall go empty handed in Jesus' name. Because he said, upon this mountain there shall be deliverance. Oh, yes, and we shall possess our possession. Tonight, oh God, and people shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. Lord, I commit the speaker, our wonderful speaker, our wonderful guest, our wonderful minister into your capable hands, oh God, that you will do marvelously, you will do greatly through him in the lives of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, I pray for a, a mighty him feeling of your power. I pray for a mighty him feeling of your anointing, oh God, upon his life in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I pray God that as he presents, oh Lord Almighty, people shall see you, oh God. Even through him tonight in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I thank you because you have done it. I destroy every power of darkness that may want to militate against this gathering. I decree that I shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. I destroy every plans of the enemy, every arrow sapphire that this platform had this gathering. I send back to the ascender in the name of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over this platform in Jesus' name. Oh, we must see. I place everybody under the canopy of the blood in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, come and descend into our midst. You said we are to our God that you are right there in our midst. Father, Lord Almighty, to come and do this and take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. As we all know, my name is Evangelist Esther Olayinkadia. And today is our third and final day of our media retreat and refreshing before the Lord the throne of grace uh, for more empowerment to, 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 to push through the remaining year and not only push through to be successful. What will be a success without with bodies? What will be a success with us carrying bodies and stress and not mentally stable, able to, to push through as we're supposed to push through and so as an ego? The theme of this gathering, the theme of this retreat is my eagle shall soar this year, 2023. And when I say this, I mean, even the remaining six months of this year, it's not going to be next year, but it is right in this year in the name of Jesus. What will be the purpose of, the, of, of soaring, of trying to gather and soar if we are being pulled down by issues and stress and mental issues? Oh, that is why we have invited our great minister tonight to come and address that aspect of our lives. The so that we can soar, because we are ready to soar. We have been feeding on the world since Thursday and Friday, yesterday, today. Every remaining limitations is going to be cut off in the name of Jesus. As the minister comes online, every limitations, every stress, every mental issues will be cut off, and we shall see them no more in Jesus' name, so that we can soar and achieve and prove into our predestined greatness. In, like the eagle, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. So without much ado, I'm going to invite our invited guest, a great minister of God. He has traveled all over the world. He has ministered on many platforms and ministered in many places all over the world, in churches and in all arenas where he has been called. This is a special uh, vessel of God that God prepared able to meet the needs of people in terms of when it comes to their stress and every other areas of life that they need to eman eman emancipate from and so that they can be free to achieve their destiny. God has now been has, has looked unto us with 
mercy and with love and has made him available for us tonight mm -hmm. so that he can bless our life. Oh, we thank God for that. So I'm going to invite him to the boat to the platform. His name is Dr. David Oni. So I'm going to invite him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to invite him on board now. His name is Dr. David Oni Rebo Sinkarabasia. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 I want to thank God for you, Ma. And I want to thank God for what God um, is doing in your life and in your ministry. Uh, our prophetess, um, Esther Dia, thank you so much um, for having us and uh, for inviting me to come and speak. And I pray that the Lord Jesus will bless us this afternoon. And he's not going to just bless us, but he's going to transform our mind. He's going to transform our mind because there is no way a man could soar from a limited place. And I think that this morning, the first day of July, and the Lord was speaking to me earlier today, that this month we will break limits. And I pray that every soul listening to me this afternoon, wherever you are, in the month of July, the Holy Spirit will empower you to break limits in Jesus' name. I don't know what kind of limitation you have in your life, but with the help of God, in the month of July, you will break limits in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray. I want to simply speak on what I titled your faith and your mental health. Your faith and your mental health. Father, I want to thank you for this moment. I thank you for this ministry. And I thank you for the work you have started in this ministry. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you will do. Thank you because you will transform us. You will change us so that we can be where you want us to be. You will change us. You will transform our mind so that we can fulfill purpose. So we can swear. The Bible said those that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as he go. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and not be faint. Lord, we pray that as we hear your word, the Holy Spirit will unlock our understanding and we will begin to fly. Lord, I pray that we will not fly alone, but that we will soar. In every area of our life, you will grant us the grace to soar. In our family, we will soar. In our career, we will soar. For the kingdom of God, we will soar. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless you because you will have your way in this place. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. I want to, like I said, by the grace of God, thank you, man, for inviting us. By the grace of God, we want to talk about your mental health and your faith. And I want to show us, by the grace of God, that the issues of mental health is in the word of God. The issue of mental health is in the word of God. And I want to tell us by the grace of God that God is interested not only in your physical health, but also in your mental health. The book of 3 John verse 2 says, 3 John verse 2, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospereth. The prosperity of your soul is important to God. The prosperity of your mind is important to God. So it is the will of God that we are mentally in the right place. And I want to show us from the scripture some of the issues that relate to our mental health or wellness. And then I'm going to talk as a professional. By the grace of God, I am a mental health provider. So I see mental health patients every day, including children, young children, women, adults. So I am speaking by the grace of God from the position of physical or professional authority also. But I want to lay the foundation in the scripture. Lay the foundation in the scripture 
And then we can talk about some of the mental health issues that people experience and what can we do to get out of it. And I want to start from the book of Genesis. Like I want to lay some spiritual foundation. The book of Genesis chapter two, verse, 20, verse two says, and three. And in verse two, it says, and God rested. And God rested after all his work on the seventh day. Why will God rest? Why will the one that is called the almighty rest? The almighty doesn't need to rest because it's almighty. The almighty God doesn't need to rest because he has all the power. But the Bible says, and he rested. What that means is that God is trying to create a pattern for you and I. <clears throat> a pattern to live by. A standard to live by. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible says, I am the Lord who neither sleep nor slumber. So he doesn't need to rest. But in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, the Bible says he intentionally rested because he wants to create a pattern for us. He's creating an order to rest for us. And I want you to think beyond physical rest. I want you to think about mental rest. Because in this country, we work so much. And even when we say we are on vacation, our mind is still working. Our minds are still engaged. On the seventh day, God rested. He didn't do anything on the seventh day. Why? He was creating an order. He was creating an example for us to live by. It is God's will for you, brethren, to live a mentally balanced life. Because there is no way you can swear if you don't understand divine balance. There is no way you can swear if you are mentally down. There is no way you can fly if you are mentally down and broken. So God rested to kind of show us how we should live. And I want to tell you, and I will share briefly with you, the life of a man in the scripture who was anointed, powerful, and yet he has he came to a point in his life and in his ministry that he had some mental health issues. And he took God to help him. To be honest with you, he took two angels to visit him. And then he took God himself to visit this man. If you have your Bible with me, I want you to turn to the book of First Kings chapter 19 and you will see a man there. The name of this man is called Elijah. Elijah was a man who could call fire. Elijah was a man who enjoys the presence of God. Elijah was a man who could bring a whole nation under their news. Elijah was a man through whom God brought revival to the whole nation of Israel. A singular man who could restore a whole nation back to God. But when it comes to the book of 1 John, 1 King, chapter 19, something happened to Elijah. I read 1 King, chapter 19. Like I said, I'm trying to establish the fact that mental health issues is God's will. I'm trying to establish that God created an order for us to live a balanced life. So you are not supposed to only be spiritually healthy or physically healthy. You are supposed to be mentally healthy also. It's God's will. So now let's look at the life of Elijah briefly and then we'll see what he experienced 
then I will start going into some mental health issues that people could have and how we could address those issues. First King chapter 19, and I read from verse two. And Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let God do to me your muscle if I do not make your life as the life of one of them tomorrow by this time. Hmm. And when he saw that, Elijah, a man who just brought fire, the Bible says he arose and he ran for his life. He was threatening. And so the man of God arose and he fled. And the Bible says he went a day journey to the wilderness. I want to talk about the fact that Elijah experienced some form of depression in this place. Look at verse 4. He went a day journey to the wilderness. Are you listening to me this morning? And it seems this afternoon, and it seems like the journey of your life is into the wilderness. Or you find yourself in a situation where you couldn't see hope around you. A wilderness is a dry place. Or do you find yourself in a dry place? He went a day into the wilderness. And that is called social withdrawal. He withdrew. A social withdrawal is a symptom of depression. Withdrawing to yourself as a result of something that happened. If you are a believer and you are listening to me today, and all of a sudden, or you have a friend or a family member, you see yourself just withdrawing, or you have children or teenagers, and they begin to withdraw themselves by themselves, then something is wrong. Elijah didn't just wake up in the morning and withdraw himself. He woke up in the morning, had something. There is always something that triggers. And so you have children, teenagers, husband, parent, that suddenly begin to just withdraw themselves. They don't want to sit at the family table. They want to go into a wilderness. They just want to be alone. Elijah said, I can't deal with this. I have to be alone. So he doesn't recognize there are certain things that, you know, Elijah was anointed, but he find himself in a place, in a lonely place. A place of self-isolation and withdrawal. He wasn't withdrawing because he was seeking the face of God. He withdrew because he was going through some mental torture. He was going through some mental threats. So he withdrew. That's verse 4. And he went a day's journey into the wilderness. That's social withdrawal. And he came and sat down under a broom tree. Look at the wall. He sat down. Did you see that? Depression will keep you down. A man with a mental challenge will be down. You are an eagle. And God has called you to be an eagle. But with depression and mental challenges, you can be down. The eagles in Elijah was down. The Bible says he sat down. Are you sitting down? Sitting down in the house? Feeling like doing nothing? Are you sitting down in your career? You don't feel like moving forward anymore? Are you sitting down in the pursuit of what God has called you to be? Do? Are you sitting down regarding your purpose and plan and future young person? Sitting down. The Bible says, and he sat down. So the first signs of depression you will see in the life of children 
or women is that they withdraw. They can withdraw from their husband. They can withdraw from their children. They can withdraw from people. And then you see them slowing down. Sitting down means slowing down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if this is blessing you. To sit down means to slow down. So another major symptoms of depression you will see in people is sitting down. And the Bible says is sat down. I want to say that you cannot soar in the position of sitting down. And it is not God's will for you to sit down. So the devil is not only interested in attacking your physical health, he is interested in attacking your mind to sit you down. I pray this afternoon, anything that is keeping you down, in the name of Jesus, be lifted. Every burden and every embargo placed upon your life to, to sit you down, to pull you down, to push you down, so that your ego will not swear. I command those things right now in the name that is above every other name, Jesus, to be lifted. You cannot swear. Bring down. You need to be up to swear. You need to be up have you ever seen a plane, a plane swearing in a sitting position? It is not possible. Look at that in verse 4. And the Bible says, and he sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die. Another symptom of depression is feeling suicidal. This happened to Elijah. Will you believe that? We all see Elijah as a man of power, a man who can call down fire. In fact, we pray, God of Elijah, send them fire. God of Elijah, send them fire. God of Elijah, send them. You know that song? But this same Elijah, a time in his life, was sitting down. And he said, Lord, look at that. He said, Lord, he prayed that he might die. So another symptoms of depression you will see in the life of a Christian, whether a Christian or not, is people who are willing to die. Let me tell you something. I see people every day, young people, 17, 16, 14, 52, 60, who are willing to die. You tell me all the time, I don't feel like I want to live anymore. I felt I've lost my purpose. I just want to die. In fact, there was one that I went to see and we were looking for her because I was there and they were looking for where she's, she is and she was already in the bathroom, tied her neck and life was almost out. A young woman of 32 years old. So this is real. In the practical sense, I see people every day who want to die. Look at Elijah. He was praying for death. He was asking God for death because he was in a depressed state. If this could happen in the journey of Elijah, it could happen in your journey and my journey. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that whatsoever the attack that the devil might throw at us is going to backfire in the name of Jesus. The devil couldn't bring Elijah to his knees physically. So he attacked his mind. He attacked his mind. Jezebel hasn't shown up. Jezebel hasn't sent soldiers. Jezebel hasn't done anything. He sent a word. <laughs> a single word. Attack his mind. And look at what is happening here. Look at what is happening. The Bible says, and he prayed that he would die. So you will see people who are depressed, feeling hopeless, feeling helpless, 
and feeling that they want to die. If you see a child, a young woman who just feel it doesn't work, it, it's over. There might be a symptoms of depression. You have having suicidal thought. Today, by the grace of God, and you are listening to me, at the end of this message, get in touch with the woman of God. You need counsel. There is no shame. If this happened to Elijah, it could happen to anybody. His mind was attacked. I read the later part of verse 4. And he said, it is enough. It is enough means I don't have a motivation to continue. That's another symptom of depression. You don't have motivation to continue to pursue your career. You don't have motivation to continue in that marriage. You don't have the motivation to continue in your career. You don't have a motivation to even pray. Elijah said, it is enough. I'm done. It is over. What is the point? That was what he was telling God. That shows lack of motivation. In people that are depressed, you see that they lack motivation to do anything. If you notice your child lack motivation to go to school, you need to question if that child is depressed. Maybe that child is being bullied in school. And the child is depressed. A child that always loves sport, now doesn't have motivation to do anything, just want to sleep, just want to stay home, is depression. Lack of motivation. There's lack of drive in Elijah to continue. A man, you don't you think a man who brought fire and killed about 400 prophets of Baal at the snap of a finger, he could command Jezebel to die. But he was attacked. He was attacked. His mind was attacked. And so, a whole nation couldn't stop him. A whole prophet of Baal couldn't stop him. But Jezebel, the word from Jezebel, triggered this man of God into a state of depression. He said, Lord, it is enough. And look at that verse. And he said, Lord, we are still in verse 4. Take my life. You see, people who are depressed want to die. And this is common in these nations, in the state where I worked, one out of every five adults is depressed. One out of every five adults, depressed. Look at what he said. Take my life. I am not better than my forefathers. The word I am not better than my forefathers means there's loss of hope. Are you listening to me today? Or are you going to listen to this thing? And you find yourself in a, in a hopeless place. You think there is no hope. You can't see the end in sight. You don't see the future in your marriage. You don't see the future in your career. You stop believing in yourself. Or you stop believing in God. You have lost it. You have lost your purpose. It seems you are alone and miserable. Those are symptoms that are consistent with depression. I'm not here to preach, actually. But I just want to create some very important basis. And if you read that scripture, because of our time, if you read that scripture very well, you'll find that it took God to send Angels two times to rescue Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at that. If I go further, because this is not a Bible study, I wish we had more time. We would have gone deeper into this. For you to understand, when you go to verse, verse 5, 
Look at verse 5. He said, I am not better than my father. <laughs> then the Bible said he lay down. Depression will make you lay down. You will lay down. And the angel touched him and said to him, arise. It is not God's will for you to be down. It is God's will for you to arise. Today after this meeting, you will arise. In the mighty name of Jesus, from every position that Jezebel put you, from every position that light put you, from every position that situation put you, for every position that marriage put you, for every position career put you, for every position you are putting, you will arise in the name of Jesus and you will fly. You will arise in the name of Jesus and you will fly. The Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. That is the will of God. So the angel came to him and said, arise. Your position is in Christ is not a position to be down. Jesus was already down so that you can be up. Jesus was down so that you can be up. Jesus was down so that you can be up. You are not permitted to be down. Hallelujah. You, as a Christian, you are not permitted anymore to be down. Look at what the angel said. He said, arise. And he fed him with bread and with water. The bread represents the word of God. The water represents the Holy Spirit. So the word of God and the spirit of God could help you out of depression. But let me stop there because I wish we can go on. You know, I, by the grace of God, I'm used to preaching, but I'm also a medical professional. So it's kind of real. I want to be able to do a balancing to this. Look at that. The angel fed them with bread, the word, and water. And what happened? Elijah still went back to sleep. For you to know how serious depression could be. Let me tell you, let me share something very briefly, and I will quickly go into symptoms of depression, how to notice things in children. And we can't, one hour, maybe the next time we'll do this again, maybe at some point. Because there's so many issues people are going through in their lives and they are hiding it. If Elijah, a powerful man of God, needs help, you need help. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how anointed you are. If Elijah will need divine intervention, you need help. You need help. Jesus said, my soul is sorrowful to death. Father, if it is possible, look at that. In the garden of Gethsemane, the devil attacked his soul. And he said, my soul was sorrowful to death. And the Bible said the angel came to minister to him. Do you know the angel has to come to help Jesus? So you need help. I don't know how many of us are online, but if you are going through any of this, after this meeting, you need to reach out for help. Elijah of all men got help. I pray the Lord will help you. I pray your life in after this meeting, we experience divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. He had a bread and a cake. And I thought that when angel fed him, he will rise up and he will continue. But no, look at verse, verse 5. The Bible says, and the angel touched him. He said, arise and eat. And so he ate and he drank. And you know what happened? And he lay down again. Uh-uh. He went back to sleep. He went back to depression. Even after the first angel. Then the second angel came. And Elijah was still down. And then God himself had to show up. To help him out. Let God help you. In this month of July. In the mighty name of Jesus. It took two angels to visit. Then it took divine visitation. 
It is the plan of the devil to cut your wings as a Christian because you should be flying and to shut you in the cave. Do you know Elijah after this? He went to the cave and he went to shut himself in the cave. I don't know how many of you also are in the cave right now. In the cave of depression, in the cave of being down. Shut down there. A man who's supposed to be swearing was shut down. A man who just brought revival to the old nation was shut down in the cave. But God intervened. I pray the Lord will intervene. Do you know what God did to heal Elijah? God had to talk to Elijah. In mental health, there's something we call talk therapy. God himself had to talk to Elijah. And today God has made his servant available for counseling. God is not going to come down again and talk to us one-on-one. -on -one. He has raised men and women. He has put his spirit in them to talk to you. So if you're going through any of this, you need that talk therapy. You need that counseling. And God has to speak to him. And you know when God speaks, he speaks life. So life, the life of God was injected again before Elijah could be free from the spirit of heaviness. I pray the Lord will help you and I will shall be free. Our children shall be free. Our career shall be free. Our ministry shall be free in the mighty name of Jesus. How can you fly when you are shot in the cave? But when God spoke to him, when he, he received a word from the Lord, he was made whole. Now I want to establish the, a word from the Lord can make you whole. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a medical professional. I treat patients with medication who have depression. In fact, I have a clinic where I see people every day. I've seen some this morning. But I want to tell you that a word from the Lord, just as the word from the Lord made Elijah whole to make you whole. You know what happened? A word from the Lord came to Elijah and that word awakened his faith and then he began to move forward. Allow God this morning, this afternoon, to touch your heart. I want to briefly talk now. I've talked as a minister of the gospel. That living a balanced life is God's will for your life. Living a stress-free life is God's will for your life. Let me share something with you before I go into, I know I stay a couple of minutes, before I go into what you can do and what you can notice in your family, in your children, what you can notice that can help you, help them. I have a cousin in this country. He, he died the 1st of June, which is today makes it exactly 30 days. He was 30 years old. 30. Young man. Came from Nigeria. Energetic and powerful. Ready to... He has dreams and aspirations. He wants to do great things. He want, to, he want to do great things. He was in school, in nursing school. He was working. In fact, he became a lawyer when he was 24. Lot of dreams. Married. But he was going through some stress in his marriage. And he kept his secret. And his wife kept his secret. So suddenly the two of them separated. And then there was a lot of issues. One money, exactly a month today, he just fell down in his house in Maryland and he died. What? A 30-year-old 
Just fell down, died. No, we must know what, what happened. They did investigation and did everything. They found out that my cousin died from stress. He died from stress. No heart problem, no medical problem. They look at his brain, nothing was there. But in his body and in his system, the expert saw symptoms and signs of stress. If God will rest, and he didn't need to rest, he's showing us an example. We must balance our life. If we don't balance our life, we can't live enough to fulfill purpose. I pray that you and I will fulfill purpose in Jesus' name. I want to talk about what are those things you will see in your family, in your friends, to notice there might be some symptoms of stress. There might be some symptoms of um, depression. One, you might see a change in their appetite. They stop eating well or they eat too much because of the pain in the heart. They want to deal with that pain. They are looking for comfort. So they turn to food and they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Oh, they don't eat at all. If you notice any of the symptoms, you have to reach out to help. Either in friends, in colleagues, in anybody, in your fellow brethren, you have to reach out. I wish my brother, my cousin, reach out on time. I wish you reach out. I wish you reach out and say, I'm going to stress. But it was too late. It was too late. Number two, you will see this person either sleeping too much. Look at Elijah. Elijah was sleeping too much. Or he's not sleeping at all. Or he or she is not sleeping at all. If you have a teenager who sleeps all day, all night, and it's not like that before, you need to reach out to them for help. It might be that they are depressed or they are going through the process of depression. Number three, you see that Elijah was down. There's been a lot of fatigue. Just been tired, sluggish. Don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like doing anything. You lack energy to do anything. Then you can see tearfulness. People don't become very tearful, crying, emotional, negative emotion, sadness. Then how do you notice a child or a teenager, a child is depressed? Everything I have mentioned, you will see in a child. But you will also notice that a child becomes suddenly shy. They are, they are not always shy, but they become become suddenly shy. Then you see a child become suddenly withdrawn. Then a child can start having night terrors. Every night they have bad dreams. Those are things you will see in children. Praise God. We have people who are teenagers. For teenagers, when they are depressed, sometimes you can see that they can't make decisions. They find it difficult to make decisions. They cannot focus. And do you know that this thing makes our teenagers to resort into substance use? They start looking into something to help them. It took God to help Elijah. But we are living in generation where people are looking for something else. The people I see in my clinic, they look for marijuana. They look for methamphetamine. They look for heroin. They look for cocaine. Because nobody noticed them when these things are starting. Even in, in Christian's home, we don't notice. We are too busy to notice our children. And God is looking and saying, you will give account. Hmm. They look into, 
they look into tobacco. A lot of these children grow up in the church. In the church. I see, see, I see a lot of patients. I mean, a lot. You know, most of the people, people I see are people who are already in, in the prison. So there was nothing to hide. They would tell me, I grew up in the church. And I was molested and raped by my uncle when I was three years old. And that was it for me. I was raped by my neighbor. Oh, I, I had a story of a young lady. She's raped by his uncle for seven years. Seven good years. She lost herself. I'm, I said, what happened? He said, my mother was too busy. My father was too busy. They had no time. I said, why didn't you cry out? I can't cry out because there was nobody around. Today, she's homeless. She looked for help in drugs. And you can't look for help in drugs without committing crime because when you depend on drugs, you commit crime. You see, I don't, I wish we have enough time. What about, what about trauma? Sexual trauma. Emotional trauma from husband to wife. Wife to husband. Wife to husband. Husband to children. Traumatizing the mind. We always think about trauma as physical trauma. No. The most dangerous, if you have a physical trauma, you can be healed. Let me give you an example. I just looked at my hand a couple of months ago. I'm better now. But when you have the, the trauma of the mind, it takes God. And it takes external thorough <coughs> help to get out of it. I want to round up because I can see that time is running out. But I want to appeal to the woman of God that in this kind of program, it's something that a lot of people, a lot of people suffering in silence, just like my cousin. It took God to help Elijah. He took angels to come minister to Jesus. How will you know you're going through some trauma in your life? One, you will begin to see the experience replay your mind again. All the time. Whether experience of rape or experience of pain or experience of being beaten or experience of emotional abuse replaying in your mind all the time. Number two, you begin to see Dreams about it. I have people that were shot in the back. And since then, I had a, I had a 65 year old man who was sexually abused when he was seven. And he spoke about it when he was 67. So 60 years. And for the first time he was telling me about it, he was crying like a baby. He said, I thought that 60 years should be enough to get this off my mind. Look at the children of Israel. They were traumatized in Egypt. Even though they left Egypt, Egypt couldn't leave them. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you get that revelation. There are people today who are traumatized when they were single. Even though they are married, they are still single because their trauma wouldn't leave them. I want you to seek for help today. I wish I'm able to go through all this, but I am very sure that you have been blessed. I know, and I want to pray that the Lord who help Elijah would send you help. 
This month, I can't go through, and I wish I could talk about trauma in children. How do you notice a child has been raped? A child has been abused? Well, we don't have the time. We'll, we'll do that next time. But I want to pray for you that the Lord who helped Elijah will send you help. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the broken at them, to, 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 to release those who are in prison and to give the garment of joy for the spirit of heaviness. I command every spirit of heaviness to disappear. Everything that keeps you in the cave of sorrow, I command them to be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus came to set the oppressed free. I pray that your mind will be free in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will be released from every mental bondage in your life. You will be released from every chain that binds your mind. Every trauma, every depression, every anxiety will be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the Lord will give you beauty for ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. Lord, I thank you for your word and I thank you for the grace you have given me. Thank you for pastor, prophet, Esther, dear, thank you for this ministry. I pray that you that have begun a great work, you will perfect it. Thank you for the privilege to speak. Thank you for everyone who hears. Thank you for blessing us. I return all the glory to you. Thank you, Jesus, for this one hour of grace, one hour of utterance, and one hour of possibility. Let it be a one hour of transformation in our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship and we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord, women of God. It's over to you, man. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. That was powerful. That was a mighty, mighty eye opener. Oh my God. Thank you, man of God. Thank you for this opportunity to hear this word, to Thank hear you. these testimonies, to yeah. hear the experiences, to even from the um, biblical platform that yeah. you brought us in, the experiences of Elijah, experiences of Jesus Christ. Even Jesus needed help. I never thought of it before today was an eye opener for me Thank to you. even realize that even our lord and savior jesus christ he needed help out of depression out of the trauma he went through when he was greatly tempted and the the, 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 the experience of elijah so we all need help who are we to say we don't need help who are we to keep it secret thank you for opening our eyes to know that when we are going through this we should not be ashamed to share, to look for help, to look for someone to talk to, to speak to. Oh, thank you, man of God. It's been, it's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I wish we had more time. I didn't want you to stop. Personally, I didn't want to. I wanted to type, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to type it because it is informative. It is a great knowledge to know even for our own lives and our children. It is a must. It's not an option. It's a must. I want to thank you for God, for the auction upon your life to function in this area and to minister. Thank you so much. You have imported us. You have poured in us a lot of knowledge and awareness. And now we are more educated, more inform informed in this area. And we shall, I surely we shall come again. Oh, definitely we shall come again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. David Oni. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Hallelujah. I was typing here that I don't know. Um, I don't know if um amen. I don't know if anyone have questions that you want to you want to share. If you have questions you want to share or you want to ask him, please, it's a free uh, place. You can type your question and we will ask him 
and uh, it will give us a response. It will give us a response. If you know that you are not in a hurry, we are still here, it's still here for us. Please type your question and we will read it to him and he will answer the question. Amen. Amen. Um, let me start from uh, myself. So when I ask this question, I'm going to highlight him back for to 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 answer us. Let him let me start from myself. Um I have a question. How, how would you, as a person, you know by yourself that you have gone through a situation, a traumatic situation. You've experienced it. You know. But you, and you realize it that it affected you. You do realize it. And... Um, you pray about it and continue to try to get over it so that you can move on and function. But you still realize that you are still thinking about it. You still realize that in as much as you are bracing yourself up, you are rising up, you're saying, I'm a Christian, I still want to forge ahead. But you are still thinking about it. And somehow in your subconsciousness, it's preventing you from taking another step in that direction, in that area that caused you trauma. How would you, you know, advise that one should overcome such experience? Amen. Let me, let me um switch the, let me switch the the video back to you, sir. Okay. So uh, that uh, you can um. Let me switch the video back to you so that you can explain to us. All right, All right ma'am. Thank you very much um, for that question. Um, one of the things you see in patient with trauma is that you see that there's something called avoidance. Now, you try to avoid anything that traumatizes you. You try to avoid any place that reminds you of your trauma. You try to avoid any person that reminds you of your trauma or that looks like a person that traumatized you. Hmm. So mentally speaking, those are some of the symptoms you see. You don't want to go there. You don't want to think about it, for instance. But this is what we do. Hmm. Hmm. We cannot overcome it by running away from it or trying to avoid it. One, we need to be able to release ourselves. And one of the best ways we can release ourselves is to kind of look for somebody that can be trusted to talk to, hmm. to really talk to. Because by the time you begin to speak about it, of course, somebody's going to cry. You go through what is called, there's something called re-traumatization, even, as you speak about it. So what we do mentally is that we now begin to introduce people to their fear gradually. Hmm. That's how to overcome it. You don't run from it. The man I spoke to was raped when he was seven years. Hmm. He talked to me about it when he was 67, 60 years, and he was crying. I said, I thought this will go away. Hmm. For 60 years, it has held me bound. So I started talking about it. And then we talk about it gradually and gradually and gradually and gradually. In the, in the, in the world of medicine, we now let people gradually face what they fear. And that's how the fear disappears. Hmm. So running away from it is a natural response but it's not going to bring the solution. It's, what is going to bring the solution is looking for people or help to address it. In the case of Elijah, he was literally given a cake, which means the word of God, bread, and water, which means the Holy Spirit. Because he can heal. The Holy Spirit has the power to heal. But we also need help. Reaching out. I said, this is what has happened to me. And then taking counsel 
on how to deal with it. Hmm. God had to ask Elijah, God had to talk to Elijah on what to do to get out. Hmm. He said, go here, you will meet Jehu, anoint him. Go here, you will meet a man called Elijah, anoint him. Then do this, do that. Hmm. Sometimes we feel we can figure it out by ourselves, but we can't. Because even Jesus needs help, like we said. So it's to start taking steps to say, I can't run away from it. I need help and I need to seek help. Yeah. And anybody helping you will start, you know, reintroducing it, like talking about it gradually and say, how will you respond? How will you respond? They will help you to confront it. Yeah. There's something called EMDR. They will help you to confront. They call it exposure management. They will re-expose you to things like that. But it starts to be a very gradual process. One thing I will say, because I don't want to take time, healing process is painful. It will take time, but it is possible. I don't know if I've answered that very well, but I think that oh, that's yes. what we need to do. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes, uh, man of God, you have. You have... Um, responded i don't know if um they can hear me hello i don't know if everybody can hear me um yes hallelujah oh yes uh, thank God. Yes. um thank you for responding thank you for um highlighting and you know explaining the the the, the situation that is very, 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 um, you know, an eye opener is very enlightening. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we thank God for that. Mm-hmm. Another, there's another question here that someone pinned here. I'm so sorry for the reception. I don't know what's going on with our reception. I see the um, lights blinking and going on and off. So um, we we'll just um, have to manage what we have. And uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to steady the, the internet connection in Jesus' name. Amen. Because this is a very important topic. And uh, we want to, you know, take advantage of the man of God in our midst as much as possible. There is another question here by, um, by someone here that says, he says, Sir, how can we identify someone who is stressed? without seeing the person physically? How can we identify someone who is stressed without seeing that person physically? So um, I don't know if there is more to the question, but that was how it is tied here. Okay. How can we identify someone who is stressed without seeing the person physically? All right. That uh, that's a very important question. And I thank you for... Uh, that question. Um, sometimes it might be very difficult um, to, if you are not seeing the person physically, but there are things we might notice. One, the person won't be able to keep things together. For instance, the person won't be able to focus. The person won't be able to pay attention to details. You are talking to the person and you say, ah, what did you say? Eh, what did you say? If you are talking to that person, it's easily distracted, not paying a lot of attention to details. Or you can see somebody, if you see the person, you can see the person might be a little bit fidgety, just restless, just difficult, intense difficulty in staying still, easily distracted, not paying attention. Those are things that are consistent with stress that you can notice if you are talking to the person on phone. Hmm. The person is not, okay, what did you say? Oh, we have, you have been talking about something for 15 minutes. I say, oh, what did you say again? Means the mind is somewhere. Hmm. Something is eating that person up. Or you see somebody who is usually very cheerful, but you see a change in their, in the way they respond on phone. Hmm. Down, not responding very well, 
you can see a change in their mood. If you see them physically, you see a lot of change in their mood, in their affect, in the way they respond, hmm. in their demeanor. Hmm. If you are living with them in the house, they don't sleep well. Hmm. Hmm. If they are sleeping, they toast from bed to any little thing, boom, they are up. Hmm. Hmm. Those are things you see. Wow. wow. You know, or you can see somebody shaking his leg consistently or shaking his hand consistently. Or you are talking to somebody and the person is lost. Mind yet, the mind is gone. Lost in thought. Or the response the person is giving to you is not even coherent with what you guys are discussing. Those are things to see. So those are as far as I could go, as far as things you could notice. If it's a teenager, you see a teenager is just restless. They are very restless or they shut themselves down in, the, in their room, just doing nothing. Hmm. And they are not able to, and it might be that the teenager has been bullied in school. That's another common thing that might be going on. It could be in school, it could be at home, it could be anywhere. So those are things you will see to show this person is really going through some stressful situation and this person need help. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. And, and if people have more questions, they, we could, they could put their question to you. Like I said, you reach out to the woman of God. It is not a wrong thing to seek for help. It doesn't make you less spiritual. <laughs> it doesn't make you less spiritual. Some of the people I see are pastor sons and pastor daughters, wow. hmm. ministers, children. I pray the Lord will help us. Amen. Thank you so much. I don't know if you can take one more question before you go. Yes, one please. More. So uh, what do you do in a situation where you, you, you have a child, you know, there's someone telling me, you have a child and the child is telling you that uh, I feel like taking my life. I feel like taking my life. Uh, you look at the child, you, you have no clue why the child wants to say that. Well, you do know, you see, it's, it's so such a, it's a, such a, so corresponds with everything you just said now. You see the child in the room by themselves, lock themselves up. You see the, the, this particular child that this person was telling to me about, did all of that we lock themselves in the room not doing anything particular we just want to be alone just want to be there by themselves and you have no because you look around everything is okay but you see that about that child and then you are so lucky that the child was able to verbally tell you that uh, I, I i feel like taking my life i i don't know i, I don't think there's anything um worth living for what do you do in a situation like that Thank you very much. I think that that was a very important question, knowing what to do. The first thing we need to do is to give that child the gift of our presence. Hmm. When Jesus was down, I said, I don't know what to do. I don't want to go to, I don't know if that is called pass over me. And the Bible said the angel came there. Somebody came to be there. Somebody came through for Elijah. God had to send an angel quick. You see, a lot of people who feel depressed, down, they want to kill themselves, is because they see that life is not worth living because nobody's there for them, which may not necessarily be true, but the first thing you want to be there is that you want to be present. Hmm. And you don't want to leave that child even at that moment. Hmm. Because you are not sure what might happen in the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes. Mm. The number two is either a, the child is going through depression or is as a result of traumatic experience or is going through what is called adjustment disorder. So something is happening there. Mm. Mm. We are living in days when I have seen quite some children in my clinic that they are, because of their weight, they feel out of place and they are depressed because of that. So we need, the second thing we need to do is to find why. We need to understand why. 
Could it be there's a problem in the family? Most children from dysfunctional families, families that have challenges, get depressed when they see their father and their mother fighting, divorced. A lot of children like that, that I see, you know? So we need to look at why, what is going on? And then number three, we either need to get that child a professional help. Hmm. Hmm. And let the child know that you can trust me again or you can believe me. Hmm. There are things that it might not be appropriate for me to say here, but I've seen quite some things. Family members. Brothers, raping brothers, sister, raising, raping brothers, father, raping daughter. So there's a lot of things. So we need to, then number three, we can take the child to a safe place. A safe place. God, the child will never open to us if it doesn't trust you. If it doesn't trust you, it won't open up. If she doesn't trust you, it won't open up. So if the child doesn't trust, then we need to get professional help for the child. So the child can trust. Then we need to be careful. Maybe take some days off work, not to leave that child alone in that moment because the child need help. Hmm. The gift of presence, establishing trust, and getting professional help, and most important thing, praying. The Bible says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God." And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Ooh. After we pray, the peace of God will come. After we pray, the peace of God Amen. will come. Amen. So those are the things I would say we could um, do um, to really, because some things, some of the children, some things eating them up are things that if they open up, it's going to cause a lot of, so we need to make sure they open up, open up, open up to Ooh. us. And then we need to make ourselves a safe haven for our kids. Hmm. Our kids should be able to come to us and discuss anything with us. Some of the some of us we are too tough. And so the children will look for, for hope in their friend. And guess where their friend will lead them? They will lead them to go and buy some meth or some heroin so that they can feel good about themselves. Hmm. It is depression and anxiety and stress that lead most young people into drug. Yeah. There's no young person who just wake up one morning and say, I want to do drug. No. Yeah. If I ask 99.9% .9 of my patients, that was what led them. Yeah. Yeah. Then it was before the parent can open their eyes, it, it was already too late. Yeah. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my, oh, my, my, oh, my, this has been so very informative. I thought it's like it should never end. And there are other questions too coming in, and I have one or two that said they will send me the question to send to the man of God. So I will be, if you don't mind, I will be forwarding some um, questions of some people online to you for um, responses. I don't, they didn't want to, to type it here. Um, I just want to thank the man of God. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. So I want to thank you. I can't yeah. thank you a lot. And I, I don't know. keep you for that because if we say we should begin to continue to table all the questions, <laughs> we won't leave here. So I want thank to you. thank you. Thank you thank for you your love. Me. Thank you for thank your commitment. Thank you for thank coming you. here. You said, I just want to do this for your people. It's not that I want anything. I just want to do this for your people. Oh, mm. such thank love you. and compassion. We love you back. And we pray that the, the heavens will reward you abundantly Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you. all of us to just say a word of prayer to the man of God that has come to minister to us. Mm. And um, for God to continue to fill him up and increase him and continue to bless mm. him mm. As, uh, abundantly in the name of Jesus. We pray that the Lord will continue to enlarge your coast. Uh, you will continue to soar high as an eagle uh, according to the theme of our program. The Lord will continue to expand you, increase you, bless you more, to be able to reach out. He will use you even to 
bless other people, to bless nations in Jesus' name. As he has made you a solution to many problems, to people's problems, to lives problems because life is so much important to God. So you are a very important vessel in the hand of God. God will continue to, to, to sharpen you and a cage around you. He will surround you with his love. He will bless you, keep you under his canopy in the name of Jesus. No evil shall come near you. No, 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 no evil shall come near your dwelling in the name of Jesus. He, I cover you in the blood of Jesus, man of God. I pray that the Lord will continue to encamp around you. The angels of God will continue to minister to your needs in the name of Jesus because you have come to this platform to bless us. Ah, abundance, unlimited blessings from heaven heaven is open unto you from today in Jesus name. Your heavens shall continually be opened. Now and forever in Jesus. Amen. Name. The Lord will bless you. Bless Amen. whatever you lay your hands upon. Amen. Your children will be a blessing unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will never have cause to weep or cry over anything in Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Every blessing the Lord has given you is good and which we never had any sorrow in Amen. that name of Jesus. Amen. He's taking you to higher heights, greater Amen. heights, more heights uh, in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. The Lord will enlarge your ministry. Mm -hmm. Your ministry will go far to the further. Mm -hmm. For uttermost part of the world, Amen. in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we bless you abundantly, Amen. richly from above. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 And amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. Thank you. We have come to the end of our mid-year retreat and refreshment before the Lord. We have received the anointing to soar. We have received the anointing to push forward. We have received the anointing to break evil. Oh, we have received anointing to arise. We are, we are, we, 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 are take, we are breaking forth to take over. Like the minister yesterday said, in the name of Jesus, I want to employ you to go forth and do exploits for the Lord. The Lord has watered the ground for you all as you have joined me on this platform. You have not come in vain. You have not joined in vain. The Lord is giving you packages right now. I see the angels of God ministry to every soul on this platform right now. In the name of Jesus. I see answers being answered. I see questions being answered. I see troubled souls being resolved. I see problems turning to testimonies right now. In the name of Jesus, ah, I see that angel that is moving closer to you, that is giving you your package. He's giving you a package. Just open your hands and receive them now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I declare to you, you are not going home the same way that you have come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Father, Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jehovah, for the renewal. Oh, I hear the word renewal. I hear the word restoration. I hear the word renewal. I hear the word restoration. And I hear the word healing. Oh, I thank you for divine healing. Healing in your soul. Healing from depression. Healing from mental issues. I hear the word healing unto every soul in the name of Jesus. The Lord is meeting us right here on this platform. All glory be given to him. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Jehovah, for doing it again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have been blessed, just any type, hallelujah, on your screen. Let me just type hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We have been blessed these three days, type hallelujah. If you have been blessed these three days, type hallelujah. If you have been blessed these three days, hallelujah, let us give a shout of hallelujah to the Lord. We are giving a shout of hallelujah to the Lord. We are giving a shout of hallelujah to the Lord because he has done it. He has done it. We are soaring high. We are equipped. Our wings are renewed. 
Ah, we are gliding over the storms. Ah, we are using the storms ah, as a climbing fold to our destination, ah, to our greatness. Ah. This remaining six months of the year, we are accomplishing all that that we have not been able to do from the beginning of the year. The doors are opening. Ah. Doors of greatness are opening. Ah. Increase is pouring on us. Ah. Multiplication is pouring on us. Ah. In the name of Jesus, ah. can you feel the overflow? Flow. There is an overflow right in this place on this platform. I hope you can feel it right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is good to us. Oh, this is beautiful. It is marvelous in our sight. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I just want to soak in it. I want every one of us to soak in it. Soak in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for open doors. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been awesome. It's been beautiful. It's like it should never end. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. Please continue to share, share, share. Those that are not here, when they watch, they will be blessed. Pack their packages is also right there for them. So please share, share, share. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to say bye now. Bye now till we come back again for another session. A beautiful session with the Lord. And the Lord will direct us on what to do next in Jesus' name. It's not going to be the last. We're still going to be doing more and more of this, of this outreach, of this retreat, of this refreshing. Thank you, Father. Thank you all. Go and do exploits. The rest of the year is bringing you bountiful joy and blessing. All oh, doors are open. Go forth and do exploits. And achieve your whole aim. Achieve your vision. A a climb that pedestal. Take that promotion. Take that job. Take that. Receive your boas, your spouse. Receive your wife. Receive your blessings. Your business is, is thriving. Receive your children. Receive, receive, receive your papers. Receive everything you want because you are now an eagle. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Remain blessed. Bye. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now. I hate to go. We have to go. We have to go. Bye for now. Love you all. Love you all. Thank you all. Please share, share, share. Share our program. Share this thing, this program. People will still be blessed when they, when they watch this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. And bye now.